All right, hey everybody, and welcome to Lightbox Expo 2001. Today we have the one and only Andrea Blasich uh, from things like Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas, Shark Tale, Ice Age, The Meltdown, uh, Brave, Oscar nominated The Dam Keeper, as well as Oscar winner Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. Without further ado, uh, please welcome our amazing guest. Andrea Blasich. Hello, hi everyone. Hello, you're live. Okay, cool. So, so maybe so. So the idea was um, today to show you a little bit the the process that I'm using uh, uh, for my personal stuff, especially for the you know for the work industry, for the entertainment industry. And um, in this case, I, I did a, um, yes, I did this kind of live. Uh, uh, live event so I, I was sculpting and designed the character that i show you now that i didn't have a lot of time to to spend uh, with this character so usually i go a little bit further and then uh, when i'm happy when uh, when i feel that everything is there everything is uh, uh let's say set on stone and uh, if it's personal stuff uh, you know when i'm happy if, uh, uh, if it's work 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 related when the production designer or the art director or who else or the design uh, uh, the direct, the, the yeah, all the team uh, is happy. So my client is happy. I I take this cult uh, in uh, to the next stage. The next stage is to basically uh, try to uh, capture all the elements that I that I put in clay into a digital uh, version of, of it of it. And I did a quick um, uh, video this morning to that I want to show you. Obviously, I'm going to turn the, the my my screen and uh, I show you guys the. Um, what I'm talking about, so you guys can <laughs> can see. I don't know if you see both both screen. Can you see myself and then in the presentation, Bobby? Can you see both? Okay. Now no, no, I'm starting with the. Can you see the video, right? Okay. You see my little my little window too now. It's the only one. So basically, the idea is to you know bring the skull to. Uh, like, like I was said uh, before, to a digital uh, um, uh, level. So I'm using this software that, you know, I, don't ask me which software we scan because, you know, I, I don't want to do a lot of publicity to to this company because, you know, uh, I don't know. But it's, it's, it's a good scanner. It's in, it's in uh, um, the, you, you can find it uh, around. And, uh, you know, it's uh, for, for me, it's, it's, it's the step that they can allow me to bring it to the, to the digital level. Uh, uh, medium. It's um, um, so basically I, I do different passes. There, there are the camera is uh, capturing uh, uh, pretty high detail uh, the the sculpture. Obviously, you will see later. There's a lot of uh, a lot of cleaning, a lot of uh, uh, fixing, a lot of uh, uh, play around with the uh, with the shapes. Especially when uh, before I start to do the um, the final. I don't say the final model, but but they, uh, the model that are going to hand it to the to the production. So my step is is, is pretty much one of the first uh, stages. You can see here the, the you know the in the little window the the, the scan is uh, capturing uh, you know photometric uh, the the sculpture is like a rotating table. So uh, so the, it's like three sixty, and then obviously I have to do tweaking in the in the scan. So maybe you know for example the under undercuts on the on the cape. Uh, Sometimes I. I I rather to sculpt. Uh, I rather to cast uh, the final uh, uh, cast in raising because it's easy to handle it. Because when when I scanned, uh, as I was saying yesterday, the, the clay model, sometimes the refraction of the of the oil of the clay that I'm using, it kind of influences the quality of the scan. So it's all a back and forward between uh, uh, how you handle the the digital file and then uh, the final result. So it's going to be obviously. It depends even on the size of the character. If I do, usually I try to do uh, a full figure, and then for the face uh, or for the hands, uh, I do a, a bigger, a bigger model. For example, uh, uh, lately I did a, I did a project, and uh, and I did a face. Uh, you know, <laughs> I discovered that it became almost like a life size, but because obviously you not know, with the interaction of the of the different uh, um, character design or. Or directors, you, know, you start to uh, change the shape of the, the character. So um, with that one, you basically you 
I have uh, uh, better quality, better details that uh, that I can implement into the full figure. For this, I'm using uh, these two approach, like a small maquette to give the feeling of the character, like 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 you see here in the in the three D scanner, and then uh, the full the full uh, uh, face, so I can I can concentrate more in uh, smaller detail that I can uh, easily capture, bring it in, into the brush lately. And then uh, it's going to be uh, easy for me to um, to to combine the two and to give a good product to the uh, to for the pipeline, especially to sell to sell the deal to the director. So these are I'm almost done with all the uh, the scan data. You get to a point where where you think that uh, you know you capture uh, pretty much uh, everything, and then uh, uh, obviously you know, try to save because. The, this um, uh, this program like like the brush sometimes they, they crash while you you did all this work. Sometimes you know it doesn't uh, does doesn't survive <laughs> doesn't survive the scan data. So those are all on the left are all the scan. So usually I go to like uh, maybe uh, eighty or or nineteen uh, pass, and then the comp the the software kind of put together uh, the file, and then uh, this is the uh, is, let's say is the final. Um, scan data that uh, I'm gonna bring it later in ZBrush. So the quality you see, for example, here underneath the I want to show you underneath the, the the cape, there are some imperfections. So this part here, the the software kind of because uh, I didn't have enough geometry there. So basically, it kind of uh, closes uh, in itself. So basically, you have to go there and then separate parts. Usually, I kind of uh, for example, in this case for the cape, I will I would have cut it here. You know the clay model, so I have uh, I, I have all the full uh, uh, area of the pens, and then uh, uh, scan uh, separate the, the cape, and then uh, put it together. The cape, the coat, you know, sorry, the coat, and then put it together. So in the, in that case, you have a better resolution underneath there. But obviously, it's gonna this this character is gonna be taken in ZBrush and reworked. And this face is really tiny; it's almost like a, an inch of. Uh, uh, Material, so you see, the, there are a lot of imperfections. I have a lot of uh, uh, elements there that, obviously, when you design, uh, when you, or even if you, if you come from a, from a drawing, you have a lot of information already in the drawing, and then you have to apply this information that you have in the drawing into the into the um, CG uh, elements. And uh, for this, I kind of like to start from a clay model because it's kind of give me. A lot of uh, uh, information where I want to go. Then I save I save the file obviously in different formats. This is like OBG or, or STL. Hey, can I ask uh, earlier? Were you saying that you scan it around seventeen times? No, more seventy. No, seventy, eighty times. The, the no, basically eighty views, eighty views of the same uh, sculpture. So basically, I'm rotating the character, and then you know if there's a really Complicate undercuts. I try to move the model in a way that uh, uh, basically the uh, the sculpture is it can kind of give me information, and the and the software can capture the information. So, for example, underneath you know underneath here there was a was a problem, and then uh, so I, I kind of uh, raise the scanner, rotate the scanner, and uh, adjust it for the uh, for for the view for the better view to capture these images. You know, it's a uh, obviously. It's not super high resolution, you know. We have like a nine. It's yeah, but this scan is like a ten thousand. Uh, you know, uh, it's like a ten gig, ten, almost a yeah, ten thousand uh, triangles. So it's pretty, it's pretty big, you know. It's almost like a. I don't know if it's an eight gigabyte or no, maybe less, maybe less. Yeah. But you see, the, the the resolution is not there because it's really it's not there. It's there, but then there's a lot of cleanup. But at least I have a lot of information. I know that the proportion of the the character is uh, what I want to achieve, is um, and it makes. So for example, I know for example the line of the lower lower lip is there, the up, the line of the upper lip is there, the the shape of the nose is already there. I don't have to find it in uh, in CG because you know it is um, may, may, maybe for me it's, it's faster to do it in this way than I'm, I'm sure people for them maybe it's faster to do in in, uh, in ZBrush, but but the, but the thing that. Uh, it's it's I think it's unique that you you really working on a uh, with a three dimensional form that it's a real three dimensional form is the sculpture you know and then basically I, I bring the the OBJ in ZBrush I do like a little setup of the 
the files, you know, I don't like this to have this kind of uh, black background. Usually I put uh, like a white background on the, like a white uh, background. So the so, and then I take off all this range, the center, the, almost like a, to have a flat uh, white uh, um, element. So, so, so I can read pretty well the shape of the, uh, the character. Obviously there is some, so this one is the OBJ import in Zebra. So I have to do some uh, cleanup, some adjustment with the uh, orientation. Make sure that the base is pretty, you know, uh, aligned with the. You see, this part is the part that I didn't scan underneath, so there is a lot of uh, uh, stuff that I, I I need to cut it or remove it. There is a lot of visuality here because uh, I didn't bring the scope to the to a, a little bit more refined level. But you know, here I have a lot of elements. I have a lot of planes on the left leg that uh, you know it can kind of help me to decide uh, to design the shape of the pants uh, while I'm doing in ZBrush. So it's, it's a lot of information that you already have. So it's easier uh, to start from. It's not that you have to, um, uh, how you say, um, try to interpret a drawing, uh, 2D drawing or what else in some three dimension. I'm, I'm already starting with something that is pretty solid and it's pretty three dimension. So these are things, the beauty of, uh, you know, starting with the, Clay sculpture and then bring it to the bring it to the brush and uh, and start to work from this level. So obviously there are there are a lot of uh, elements that uh, they have to be uh, clean. Uh, but but you see the the, the coat uh, uh, is pretty much uh, there. You know then obviously I like to use uh, you know, I do some render just to see if the 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 the, the, the character is. Uh, um, is working uh, uh, pretty well in the three-dimensional environment of the computer. Usually when I present uh, stuff to the clients, I use a really strong uh, light to become a little bit more uh, um, graphic, a little bit more uh, uh, almost flat to the drawing. So I'm using a camera that is like 85 millimeter, 50 millimeters. So it kind of compress uh, the form of the of the sculpt in a way that uh, uh, they, can, they can get... Uh, you can get cell as a as a, a 2D image, you know, and especially with the strong lighting here, uh, it's going to be easier for me to to get um, to sell the, the the idea of the character, to sell the idea of the uh, design. So these are um, you know I did I did a really quick this morning the, the this video and then obviously I have uh, let me see if I. I, have, I think I have the ZBrush file, so I can show you. So the next step is on when, when you get to, to this level is to, you know, obviously I'm organizing the, the, the file in a different uh, different way. I kind of like to, you know, keep the, the digital file because this is the one that uh, I'm going to use always as a reference because I'm going back to, to the file. And then I have a file here that, uh, you know, is the working file. So, and then usually, you know, I'm not a guru in ZBrush, but, you know, I'm sure you guys, you know, you know what, I, what I'm talking about. So I'm using barely like few, few, few tools. I like to, to use the, you know, the move topology. Obviously now it's going to crash. Maybe <laughs> I, have to, I have to separate some, let me, let me turn off some, some area. They say I work on that. Oh, sorry. Oh, so I have another, okay. So I, I cut it there and then, uh, I want to reduce the amount of, uh, so the computer is a little bit faster. So basically the idea now is the next step is to go there and then with few brushes start to work on the shape, but don't lose the, don't lose the, the, the general shape that I already have uh, with the, you know, with the clay sculpture. So for example, when I did the color, I can kind of start to smooth it out a little bit more and then bring it to a surface that uh, is pretty acceptable to the, you know, to the pipeline, to the other people that, uh, that they're going to use it, but the key is here is no don't lose the the lines and the the planes that you already put in the, you know in the in the um, in the sculpture. So then I can go with the you know usually I have a I have like a you know I, I like to use this kind of uh, high polish uh, brush that can kind of give me nice uh, edges there. Hey, can and I then I, you know real quick. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so go you ahead. Have, you have the other, the scan underneath. Yeah. Kind of, kind of like how people have like a rough, and then they they draw the final lines over yeah. the top of their drawings like that. Yeah. 
maybe it's the same idea, you know, because obviously in the rough, you know, you're going to have, uh, you know, see, if I go back from the rough and I turn off, you said that there's this intentation that maybe I decide uh, you see this plane that goes in this direction and then there's another plane. So in this case, I want to kind of clean up those lines. Usually I try to clean it uh, um, in, in the clay. So I have, a, I don't say super sharp line, but uh, it's, it's cleaner. Or uh, if I don't have it in, uh, in uh, you know, for example, the, the sculpt is too rough, I want to go there and uh, kind of readjust uh, those lines. So maybe this uh, th this process now is just uh, to go there and uh, adjust those lines, those imperfections. They maybe there they are too much imperfection, uh, you know, in the clay sculpture. But then at the end, uh, you know, the silhouette, the the, the character still is still uh, readable as as the sculpture. That is the key. You know that uh, even when I go on the face, obviously I have to play a little bit more. For this, I'm using a higher scanner uh, for the face and higher different sculpture. So I have, a, I, have, I have a better resolution there. Because, you know, obviously, if, if I start to, you see the frame here, it's pretty, the resolution is not, uh, is not a lot, you know. So sometimes I even, uh, you know, I decimated uh, when I get to the point that uh, I have to work on, uh, on this area here. If I have a, a better uh, resolution, I can give more, more obviously, more, more information to the, to the guy that, uh, that is going to come after me. But this is more like a phase of design, a phase of uh, uh, deciding where you're going to push more the scan, where you're going to pull it, pull it back. So, it, so here we have to make decision of, uh, you know, how we're going to uh, design the character. Maybe the cheek that I didn't uh, put in uh, because it was kind of rough. I start to indicate a little bit more in my scan, in my sculpture. So basically, it's all a back and forth, like a massaging and. Uh, and adjusting the the shape in a way that uh, that I kind of like it in a way that I kind of uh, first of all you have you have to like you have to be sure that uh, you know it's working with the with the overall shape and then make sure that obviously it's closer to the design that the, that the director of the of the production designer who else uh, needs it for for their movie for the project and then just uh, you know push it more for example now. For, as I told you, for the face, I would have used a different, uh, I would have done it a bigger uh, cast, and then uh, uh, I would have done uh, uh, a better a better solution. Then with the pinch, you know, I can create these nice, uh, these nice sharp edges. But you, you guys, I'm sure, you know, you know better than me how to, how to achieve uh, a clean line. But this, for me, is just uh, to have an idea how it's going to, how it's going to look the character, you know. And especially for the design or for the character design, how we can bring the the character to the next stage. You know, the, the, for example, the lips. You start to work the lips. Obviously, you have to know how the structure of the lip is. The lips are so the the, the plane of the face. You have to know. You have to know all, all this stuff. It's not uh, there's not interpretation there. You know, because obviously it's a humanoid. So we have to like an African American uh, face. Uh, the structure of the face is. You know how the lips are in. You know, proportion to the to the chin, or I guess uh, African French, yes, because um, somebody was asking. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the French. French. Is that like I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's a French. Uh, it's a French, <laughs> of course. And I just wanted to let everybody know this is interactive, so you can go to slido.com hashtag Andrea Day Two. You can see on the bottom corner of the screen. And then ask your question there. We'll ask yeah, it right I, online. Yeah. Hey, don't be don't be shy, you know. If I can help you, know, I will uh, will be happy to to respond. And then the same, you know, with the with the you know when you start obviously I start to work uh, and uh, I kind of like to to play all around. I don't I don't like when I'm sculpting. I do, I'm not stuck only only one area. I'm uh, pretty much uh, working on uh, the full body. You know, I'm going around and and then obviously double check. And the scan is still uh, still closer to the to what I have there. Uh, in the other layer, I, I delete the, the, the lower part, but you know, usually I try to have a. Uh, um, I kind of like to separate uh, uh, the different elements, so obviously I have more resolution. You know, for example, into the jacket, you know, into the body, into the face. Uh, the face, I will uh, I will do. Um, I will have a super uh, bigger resolution. The hands, even the hands, they're really they're really rough, you know. But but they kind of give me the 
the planes where where I can play with the with the shape later. You know, I can go there and start to play a little bit uh, with the shape like this. You know, try to find the, the knuckles there. Maybe even the even the you know when, when usually when I work on the on the hands, my eyes goes uh, in other direction of in other parts of the skull, and I kind of compensate those lines based on. Uh, Based on uh, on the elements that, that they are in the area, for example, then I can start to build uh, maybe the, the the finger there. With the, I like the you know the slash. We can I can kind of cut. Uh, I can kind of cut uh, uh, you know small uh, indentation there like this. I'd love to go to another question. And just a reminder, everybody, if you want to get your questions answered right away, um, you can put them to slider.com, yeah. hashtag Andrea Day 2. Uh, we're going to go to a question from Ander. Uh, Ander oh. says, um, please, uh, what is more viable, going from traditional to digital or going straight to digital modeling? Well, you know, maybe I'm the wrong, maybe I'm the wrong guy to ask because I'm a traditional guy. So I will tell you, I will start from tradition and then go to digital. But uh, you know, I, I I think it's like when when you are a painter, you know, if you never painted traditionally and then you start to paint directly in, in uh, with Photoshop or Paint or whatever, you know, the sensim the sensibility is different. You know, it's gonna be you're gonna see the difference. Uh, for example, when you see a really good painter that they can translate the painting. Uh, to their uh, to their uh, uh, digital painting like Dice or like Robert, uh, they were, they are really good uh, uh, painter. But uh, when the paintings in uh, in uh, digital, it looks like if it's if it's a traditional painting. So I, I really appreciate these people more than other people that uh, uh, they are completely digital, because uh, you know I think when you, when you learn uh, how to do tradition, you can transfer your knowledge from from the uh, basic foundation to other foundation so you can just a uh, digital just a tool you know but uh, the thinking the, the process the, the uh, all the all the thing that you you try to resolve it traditionally you can resolve in di digital you know it can give you a plus for example you know if I didn't do this sketch you know maybe I wouldn't come up with this kind of uh, nice relationship that I'm already I say that you know maybe it's already eighty percent is there. You know now it just matter to go there and uh, you know clean up some area there. This is what I will do. You know, and then when you're happy with the with the silhouette, with the shapes, things that you already control it in a, in a traditional uh, medium, because you see the character is working. Uh, you know the proportion they're working because obviously you check the proportion on on the real sculpture because I was working on the real uh, element. And then I brought in the computer, and there's not a camera, um, you know, view that maybe it gives you a different, uh, you know, even with the 35, 20. If I change uh, the lens, the, the sculpture is still there, and it's still working uh, with all these kind of lenses. So it's not, sometimes I work on a project, say, yeah, but, you know, it looks like too, it's too flat, or, or maybe it's the camera angle, say, no, the, you know, I can tell you, you know, it's, it's working because uh, it's working in the real world. And then, uh, you know, in the simulation of the real world that is the computer is going to work for sure this is what um, i think i think the beauty is starting from a traditional uh, painting or sculpture and then bring to to digital even the stroke if you do an oil painting and then you have the the stroke of the uh, the, the brush is completely different from the stroke of the digital brush that cannot emulate uh, the, um, the 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 real brush Maybe you will have even the feeling on, on the paper, you know, people that scan the paper and then start to draw on paper in, in digitally. But if you draw with a pencil on a real paper, the friction, the, the all these kind of elements, it, it, they are there and they kind of influence the way you draw, the way you sculpt, the way the clay, you know, the material, the material of the clay, the, the, the softness, the hardness, the, you know, it kind of implement a certain... Uh, uh, push of your finger into the into the into the structure and that that is is going to give you a different intentation it's going to give you give you a different uh, uh feeling for the straw so that i think would be i don't know if i was me i would start from tradition and then like i did it uh, in this you know in this really short demo 
yesterday and today, you know, just bring it to the to the to the to the computer, and then uh, you start. Uh, it, then it just matters to you know refine uh, just uh, because you already have everything there. Can I ask? I hope like, I, um, how long did the, yeah. Can I ask how so long I, did the clay part take? Um, it depends. You know, obviously, this one I did yesterday. You know, you know, we had the one hour of uh, uh, you know conversation. I was sketching, and I was um, and I was uh, you know play around with the maybe you know maybe you want to see me. So uh, um, I was sketching, and um, and um, uh, basically, you know, I was talking to you, try try to uh, interact with you guys. So so it's different. When I'm more concentrated, I can have uh, a, a full sketch. Uh, I don't say to brought it to the final level, but to to a really good, consistent level, like like you see in the Scott here. In a, you know, in a couple hours, you know, this one I did yesterday, in a, you know, in a, in an hour, one hour, hour and a half, you know. So already in an hour, you have a sketch that you can present to a client, you can present to the direct. Obviously, when you are when you are uh, uh, in the studio, it's easier because you know you, the director can touch it, can see with the lighting. Can uh, you know? Can start to interact with the skull. Sometime when uh, when I was stuck, I was working with the with the director. Yeah, I don't want to say the name, but you know, I was with the director. I, um, if, you know, you when, when the director start to go around, that he doesn't um, doesn't feel that maybe you are not there. So usually I kind of hand my tools to them to to the director. Say, okay, show show me on the skull because the majority of the director they are really good artists too. They they know how to to draw to um, and so instead to draw. On a piece of paper, and show me the lines. I rather to have him show him in the, you know into the sculpt. So the so the director become a little bit more um, attached to the piece, attached to the character, and maybe you can sell it uh, easily to the director too. So it's a little trick. Isn't that kind of scary cool. though? They could ruin your sculpture. Yeah, but, but but then you fix it. You know, you then you. But at least you you give uh, you give the finish that. Uh, they are, um, they are. They start to get the, this connection with the character that uh, that you are that you are sculpting. I think that, is, especially because it's a it's a collaborative uh, uh, effort, you know. So we need to we need to have this kind of collaboration. We need to to play around together and make sure that we are both in the same uh, ballpark, you know. So I, th I think it was um, was was really important uh, to discover this kind of process. This kind of interaction, because I noticed that you know, after that, you know, the, um, this director was getting more um, uh, into into the way that I, I was kind of pushing the design of the the, the characters, and uh, I sold it pretty pretty easily after that. So it was a was a little trick that I discovered. You know, but obviously every director, every person is different. So some people they 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 feel uh, maybe uh, they don't want to destroy like like you were said destroy the sculpt, so they try to um they try to 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 step back and say okay no you know i'll let you do it you follow you follow what i you know i'll let you do you follow what i'm doing and uh, and that's it bobby can you see my face or you see the the screen of zbrush just to make sure <laughs> i see your face okay 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 no 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 just to make sure that i press the right the right button no, because i was showing the sculpt you know i don't want the the people they don't see what I was showing, what I was trying to to tell. So, now, but I think it's a good interaction, good in good um, uh, create this kind of environment in the in the in this creative process that everybody is. First of all, everybody is sharing their their knowledge. We are only here to work for one person, obviously, and uh, you know try to put the, the ego beside. And uh, it's, it's more that um, one thing that I really like about this this. This job, why, why I still want to do it, is, is the collaboration between artists. You know, the trust that you gain, the trust that you, uh, especially when they tell you, okay, you know, you, okay, we want to see your take. We want to see what, where, where you bring the scope. We want to see uh, how you feel the character, you know, especially when the, when the, because usually my, 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 I, I'm stepping in when the, um, the process is still uh, really early, so maybe there's just the director, the production designer, and they're still uh, writing the story. So you can be a big influence in uh, develop uh, maybe part of the story or part of the vision of the this kind of idea that the, that the director has in his mind, but he can't visualize yet. Yet, so it's it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty cool. You know, it's uh it's not easy because. Uh, Sometimes you, you it's difficult to get into the head of the director or the production designer or who else. 
um, because uh, you know obviously you are coming you don't know where they went through uh, you know all the struggle that they went through to get to that point and maybe they believe that uh, it's a good stage of the, the story then you, you come in when they tell you the story you're like yeah okay you know maybe it could be better but you know you obviously you don't know so you try to uh, take uh, what they have and, uh, and plus it in one, uh, almost like if it was your story. So obviously, obviously, it's not your story, so you have to kind of detach that one too. So even your, and um, you know, I discovered with the time that you, you know, you, you, you propose different ideas, different steps. And then uh, when you, when you propose, you have to detach and then they have to decide where, where they want to go. You know, you, you can't tell them where they want to go because uh, it's, it's their story, you know, they have uh, pressure behind uh, from studio, so it's the studio decide where they want to go, where they want to tell the story. You know? So it's not, it's not you. You are just uh, a helper in the, in, the, in the bigger picture. Wonderful. Um, we have a question, and this person is saying, sorry if you answered this, I'm tuning in a little late. For someone who is completely new to digital sculpting, do you recommend any beginner exercises? Uh, I just want to tell everybody you can learn from Andrea how to do traditional uh, uh, yeah. sculptures at, in his course on schoolism.com and when you subscribe to schoolism you get access to all of the courses on schoolism you know well over 40 courses including a ZBrush uh, course from uh, Justin Gobi Fields uh, which I took and I didn't know ZBrush before that and now I I do and I've done ZBrush. I don't know it. I feel weird saying it in front of Andrea because he knows it way beyond no. me. I, I'm like you, so <laughs> no, no you're people, way beyond no. me. But uh, no. that's no, how I learned. It's through just a tool, just a tool. No, but you know, it, yeah, I'm I'm, t I'm teaching this course in uh, you know schoolism. Basically, I, it, you know, it's a it's a eight uh, eight uh, um, lessons, and I I took a design a specific design because. Um, you know, usually when I do my, the class in um, the class in uh, my studio, you know, the majority of the, the the time people they come with their own design, and I kind of like that one too. But um, the, the 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 difficulty to teach online is that uh, everybody has to be in the same, uh, let's say, starting from the same in the same direction. Or uh, here, I, I'm there with the students, so I can uh, intervene, help them. But uh, you know, obviously, doing online. Uh, uh, is is a little bit more complex as a setting up, but um, as the success of the uh, the cut is pretty incredible. You know, maybe I should I could show you some some of later some of the images of the the student. I didn't think about should I show? I but uh, see. yeah, that's it is. No, it's okay. let, let, let me go. I'm talking and then I try to prepare something so so I can show you the the image. No, I, I was really surprised because when when I start uh, when I start this class was like. A, Two years ago, I think maybe something like that. So um, I was, um, uh, you know, was I, I was kind of, you know, it took me like two years to prepare the class because I didn't know. Was, was for me it was difficult to first of all to try to um, uh, give to the student what I'm trying to what what is passing by my my mind when I'm sculpting. So yesterday I did this really quick uh, this really quick uh, uh, demo just to show you what I'm thinking when I'm designing uh, something from scratch. In the class, we're starting from a, from a drawing that, uh, you know, is from a, from a friend, uh, an amazing amazing artist, Carter Goodrich, that I can show you. Let me see, I have to prepare before. Let, let me prepare <laughs> the folder so you guys can uh, can see what I'm talking about. And um, so we start from a drawing, for a specific drawing that when, when, I, when I chose it, I thought it was a simpler, but then I discovered that while, I'm, while I was recording the, the video, it was pretty, no, it's, it wasn't easy. So I said, shit, maybe, maybe, I, chose the wrong, maybe I chose the wrong design. <laughs> but I already started the class, I already started to record all the video, and then it took, uh, you know, as I told you, it took some time. And then I said, maybe, maybe it wasn't, wasn't the, right, uh, you know, the right choice. But then I discovered that uh, the, 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 the people really, uh, the student really, um, they were really digging the design and then uh, I even discovered stuff that I didn't see when I was sculpting, kind of correcting the, the, the student, not, cor not correcting, kind of give advice to the student because usually I do like a line drawing on top. Like the same pro I'm using the same process that the, the, the designer or the, 
uh, the design that they're using with me when 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 I work on the on the sculpture. So I think it would be uh, would be pretty useful for uh, for everybody to use this kind of approach. And uh, I learned a lot from from this kind of staging. Uh, it was pretty pretty incredible. So I'm gonna show you just uh, no. I'm, I'm putting together just you know one person and then uh, let me see. Because um, it, it's pretty, it's pretty fascinating the process. Maybe I should have done it. You know, yeah. But um, I will. Uh, um, you know what? I'm gonna. Uh, sorry, guys. I, I you know I, I was uh, I was planning to do, don't show this stuff. <laughs> you got me a little bit out of uh, out of sync. Uh, Gotta keep you on your toes. I know, I know. You, no, I'm not really. I know. <laughs> Maybe I can show you this. I can show you this one. I show you this one. So I show you just a little, a little clip. So basically, I'm asking the student to to send me the. I, I kind of share the. The, the screen. So this is that year. You know when. Uh, so we 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 start from. Uh, okay. Okay, each student is different. So this person uh, was already advanced. So in my class, there are coming people that they, they never scope, people that are completely different field, and then people that they are in the business. This, uh, this girl, she's in the business, and, um, and she's really good. So this was the second, uh, second lesson. So usually the first lesson, we start from uh, the drawing, and then we build the armature. The, sec the second lesson, we start to apply clay, until we get to a to a certain feeling of the shape, the proportion, and then, then we go from the second class to the uh, let's say fourth class to define the proportion, define the rhythm, define the you know the feeling of the character, and um, uh, you know the attitude. Make sure that the sculpture is is, is standing on uh, on the ground pretty well, and then the last uh, three three lessons we we kind of define the the sculpt. And when I open the file, usually I ask the student, you know, to send me like almost like a, a turnaround, but on um, on a on a flat uh, piece of paper, so I can give them a, a little, uh, you know, indication, little notes. So, so there, I'm I'm going there, and then I, I kind of give, uh, you know, some notes like uh, like uh, like here, you know, push here, push there, you know. I'm drawing uh, maybe based on uh, based on the on the on the design where the where they should push a little bit further the. Uh, the, the the sculptor, and then you know some of them they're they're they're, they're really advanced, <laughs> like uh, like like this student, and uh, it's and it's pretty it's pretty incredible to see how, how for me it's difficult to maybe sometimes to to try to express a, a concept, but then um, when the people they really get it, you know it's really it's really remarkable, it's really gratifying, you know it's really it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty incredible. I can show you another. Another day. So this that was day day one. Uh, can, can me move this before. Okay, that was that. Then we go to day four. Now I'm open day four. So you guys can see the progress of the of this person. So this was day four. So I give them. Uh, so we start to work a little bit more on uh, some uh, you know some area. Probably some of the students they like. Uh, they like to capture the same uh, feeling of uh, of my stroke. And I kind of I kind of like that one too because you know it's uh, you know it means that the, you know I I, I kind of influence in uh, not just the style but just you know the way how it's sculpt. Then obviously we go deeper into the face, the the structure. I try to explain them uh, how is the structure of the face, uh, the uh, you know the direction of the planes, uh, stuff like that. So. We go even deeper and deeper, you know, in um, you know, in the uh, in the sculpture. You know, obviously, depend from uh, people, person to person. It's amazing. It's no, amazing it's it's it's. Could learn this, uh, you know, online and be successful with it. No, in in a, in a way, it's a, when you when you ask me, I remember, you know, was uh, was pretty. I was a little bit. <laughs> I wasn't really sure. <laughs> First of, all, first of all, if I could do it, first of all, if it, people that could, uh, they could come out with something uh, really good, you know. And they, you know, for example, this one, one of the latest uh, lesson that we did. So then, but you can see the the change of the the design, the change of the design, the change, uh, the pro you can see the progress in the scope. 
and it's pretty it's pretty incredible you know obviously she was she she was already advanced she's she was already advanced but can open other people uh, find that maybe they were I don't say a little bit, maybe they were a little bit behind, but you know, but the, but they were good too. Okay, so the last class they were they were all really good. So let me let me get that. So I just open one, no, I just open one, uh, you know. But 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 the, but then the nice thing that everybody is different. Everybody is uh, is starting from a different uh, uh, background. That, that that is that is I think is the beauty of the, you know, some people obviously they they, they never they never sculpt before, so you have to help a little bit more. Other people uh, they, they they sculpt, so you have to help less. But uh, you bring them to the same uh, to the same uh, uh, path, you know, and that th that is the the is the fun part for me too. You know, try to try to help them you know it's, and that's it's, and it's kind of uh, it's kind of nice to see the progress of uh, you know of of uh, everybody you know and there's really you know it's really gratified on on my side so i'm sure it's really gratifying on their side too because when they finish the course they have a statue that they made yeah they they, they have a statue for them this was another 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 the final final piece of another uh, student uh, I'll show you another one and especially because everybody is starting from a, from a different uh, you know background, but we have all the same the same design. Oh. So different interpretation, different uh, different way of to see the world, different culture, and and that, that is kind of cool. That is kind of cool too because uh, you know as I told as I told you when when I was doing the when I was doing this uh, this class, I I, I when I did the sculpt, I was I was doing in a certain way the character, and then I discovered more the design choices through the student you know that i didn't put in my, in my sculpture so maybe i have to go back and fix my sculpture because uh, you know we are starting from something that uh, you know we develop with the class and that is it's kind of it's kind of cool too i didn't expect i didn't expect that you know so this was another another uh, another student so everybody came uh, at the end uh, to a really good level you know really really nice uh, really nice work you know those are all different people, different, uh, you know, background, as, as I was saying before, different culture. And, uh, okay, this is the same. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I was really, I'm really pleased with the, especially because uh, they were able to, to get something for my, for my advice, you know. And then uh, some of those are modelers, some of those that work in the industry. Some of those they are uh, uh, different, uh, as, as I would say, different. You know, uh, people they, they never they are not they are not artists, but people they like uh, they like to to play with different medium. People they want to learn. You know, that is the one of the other thing that is really that is it's, it's really is really cool. The people they they want to learn. You know, they they there is no ego. There is no ego here. That is a uh, that is pretty that that is one one of the things that that I really I really like. You know. That um, it's not uh, there's not uh, comp there's a competition maybe especially when pe when the students come here and I noticed there is the because I, I did a class with uh, some people from Pixar a couple of couple of years ago they were like uh, pretty much all different level in the studio different uh, you know they were models they were texture artists they were animators they were and uh, and I could see they were this kind of uh, you know okay you are the model so you're gonna be better than me or you're and then uh, you know, I, I usually I try to kind of lower the 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 ego, try to make sure that everybody you know is in the same comfort zone. That everybody you know is here for, to learn. There is no hierarchy like in the studio, so we are all the same. We, you know, some people they can go f uh, further ahead at the beginning. People uh, people they takes a little bit more time, but they get to the to the result. Uh, that maybe it's even higher than the other person. And I remember there was a texture girl that she did. I think she did the best sculpture in the class because it was incredible. She could see and she she could do what I was try to tell tell her through the strokes, through the through the sculpt, and she really accomplished an amazing uh, an amazing sculpture. Really, really nice. Uh, so you can learn from uh, you know any any kind of things. You know, obviously doing this class online, uh, you know, it took me. 
took me a lot of energy, you know, and, uh, and, and you know, the result that they're, they're coming out uh, it really is really gratifying for me. It really, it's, it's pretty, you know, it's well, pretty incredible. I don't know how how uh, much effort you put into the course. I thank you for that. Uh, you know, it was a very difficult, challenging course to put together as well. Um, no, I know. No, thank you, Bobby. Now, Koskas, thank you for telling me to speak up. Um, I hope this is okay. I'm going to use my louder speaking voice. Uh, and Amanda, Amanda G asks a question. Do you work re mostly remotely or in studio? Uh, since uh, eight years now, I'm, work I'm working remotely. Uh, Ten years ago, I think it was um, when I was working with, with uh, Henry Selick on a, on a stop motion movie here in, here in the Bay Area. Because I'm living in the Bay Area, in the, you know, up north San Francisco, so the studio was in San Francisco. So uh, I worked two and a half years uh, for the studio, and I was working in the studio. I was uh, working one day from home, and uh, I kind of like this energy to be, especially for stop motion. Uh, you work in a, in an environment that everybody is doing different things, and then uh, you get inspiration from all the department, especially when. I, I was doing the sculpture, the, the sculpt, and then I was passing the sculpt to another department. They were doing maybe the clothing, they were doing the armature, they were doing uh, all different things. And then when you start to see your sculpt, they start to move around. With the animator that taking the sculpt, they start to move around. They start to put in the environment, the guy who's built the, um, the set. So it's getting really exciting, especially when you put your, your eyes behind the camera, you start to see this kind of magic uh, that uh, it starts to appear. That is really that was was really really cool, <laughs> uh, especially in Spider Man. I work um, I work for Spider Man. It was in 2017, I think. So I did this with uh, Shun Kim did the design, and uh, I work remotely. So he was in Los Angeles, I was in San Francisco. We did an interaction of uh, different interaction for this character, and then uh, you know I worked for uh, maybe maybe three, four months. So it was before the movie was done. So before they, they made all the decision, everything. So I give the design for this one, for you know, for Wanda and for the for the goblin we worked there. And then I remember that uh, when uh, Shun uh, told me, you know, Andre, you should go see your you should go see the movie because you see the characters that we designed, they, they took they, they took life. They're exactly like we did it. And so that was like, yeah, of course, Shun, yeah. of course, you know, the, you know, every movie is the same, you know that. But then, you know, I was really impressed the way how they were able to capture what what we did in uh, in clay, what we did in, uh, in in the in the in the in the model. Because I I, I told you know we, because we were scanning the sculpt and they were really able to bring uh, like I was showing you before with in, uh, in ZBrush with the scan data. Obviously, they had the better scanner, so they could go and get all the little indentations. So there was less work on my side to. To give them the file, uh, so th they were really able to to bring the, the the sculpture, especially on the Green Goblin. If I have it here, I can show you. They were able to to get the you know even the the, the final the fine marks. You know the, those those little strokes that uh, that I did here underneath the, the armpit. You know the, the legs. You know this kind of scaling, especially with the lighting. You know they were when the when the Goblin is moving. And uh, you know it's pretty, it's pretty close to the sculpt that I did the face. So you guys can see it's that's, pretty pretty. That's really impressive, especially you know after you showed the Spider-Man model. Well, that one's so much bigger. How do you determine the size that you're going to sculpt that? So the size, the size. You know, it, so usually I try to do the the, the sculpture in uh, with the same size relationship. So the Spider-Man would be like this. If you see in the movie, it's really compared to the face, it's really, really tiny. So I couldn't do the same scale, but with Shun, we decide to maybe to do a little bit bigger. So th this is the proportion of the two. So in reality, in the movie, is not is not this proportion. So, so but I wanted to give the feeling that uh, the uh, this character is pretty uh, is pretty extreme. It's pretty uh, you know, it's, it's a big dude and. Uh, you know, it's a big villain, so Spider-Man can get, uh, you know, can get uh, a kick by by these guys. So that was the idea. But usually, I try to keep it in the same scale for um, 
first of all, even to, to show the director almost like a lineup so they can see the relationship between uh, the character. Usually you do the smaller character and the, and the bigger character together. So you have the two extreme. And then if these two extreme that works, especially in stop motion when you do, when you have to put the camera, so there are some shots may, may, maybe when you have the two characters together. So you have to be, you have to make sure that uh, everything is, it works with the, with the topology of the, the idea of the visual of the relationship, especially, especially for, with the director of photography that they, you know, the, the, the shapes, they they get, they read really well. So one thing that's really important is the shape for stop motion. And then the animator is on top. Uh, the animator can animate this little character because I remember in uh, in the Shadow King, the smaller character was something like this. And then uh, the, the bigger character was like 16, 17 inch. So it was, um, uh, so the, the disparity of size is pretty, is pretty big, can be pretty big. And then everything is in relationship with the sets. So if you do a character this big, imagine the, the room of the character, the house where he's living, it's huge. So you have to, wow. the bigger you go, the more, the more you, obviously it's a, it's a time and a cost. So you have to, it's all in, in the balance, you know, especially later with the use, the, the use of the computer, we can kind of uh, composite, we can do all the kind of uh, tricks to make sure that everything looks uh, pretty good in the same environment. But before it was all done by hand, you know, so you have to build this set. For example, Nightmare, they, I think they build all uh, traditionally. It's kind of nice to have the traditional feeling, but uh, you know, obviously, it takes more time, more space, bigger space. The crew they're they're huge, so yeah. Um, I wanted to let everybody know once again that you can go to Slido.com and ask your questions there, or I'll try to uh, pick them out from YouTube as well um, if you want to write them into the chat, of course, and. Um, can we also see the Gwen Stacy there? The Gwen Stacy. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, the Gwen Stacy. <laughs> yeah, this was one. When we started, the, her name was, was Wanda, I think. Now it's Gwen. Yeah. The face, the face changed a little bit. The thing was uh, the body. I think stayed pretty much the same. There's some poses like this. So it's still pretty, pretty close. We did the different interaction on the on the face. So maybe this was a little bit too realistic for where they went from, where, where they wanted to go. And that this was um, is that two, three years before the movie came out. So usually you start in one direction, sometimes stay, sometimes it goes, goes in another direction because they, you know, there, there are changes. So the people, they, they, start, to, they start to go in another, in another uh, maybe they want to have other solution. This was, uh, this was one of my first... Uh, Let's say I did it. Uh, this was the first cop that I did for uh, Simba, approved or uh, sorry, no, not first cop. Was the first uh, uh, opportunity they gave me to do a maquette officially for for the studio. This was done uh, uh, for for a two D movie. So at the time, the sculpt was done for uh, uh, reference for the anime for the two D animators. So basically, you have to work all on those kind of lines, uh, the shapes. Uh, all these elements that were really important to make sure that they were all uh, in proportion, they were all uh, uh, close to the model sheet that the, the, the supervisor animator was doing. You know, make sure because obviously when you have a, like a down shot, so you can the, the 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 animator can take the sculpt and see how you how how the real sculpt in three in uh, three dimensional is working with the with the environment, so they use it as a reference or maybe an upshot of the of the you know. You know the chin is a relationship with the with the, the with the forehead, you know the aberration of the perspective. So it's all it's um, was more um, into the process. Lately, lately with the latest movies, start to get more. Um, um, they, they like to go more digital, but um, you know in the last uh, five six years, you know I was more involved. So they start to maybe come back to the sculpt. So it's a, uh, it's an, I think it's an important process uh, to don't let let it disappear. Because um, you know, as I showed you before, you know, it's uh, maybe it's eighty percent of the, the the work is already there. You know, just have to finalize and then make sure that um, you know you can transfer those lines, those planes that uh, that I put in the sculpt in digital. You know, but um, it's become I don't say mechanical, but you know, 
you have to because you have to know where to choose you have to know where to decide uh, which uh, which edge you follow which plan you follow which uh, the rhythm but the rhythm the proportion the the uh, the harmony of everything is there so that that is the the key that I'm try to to tell, tell especially to producer you know because they are the, they are the money guys so they have to you know but that, you know I can see that there is uh, this um, uh, coming back you know yeah as, maybe uh, I can as, question, yeah, as go, go. questions start to come in um, I okay, also good. had some from the internet uh, did you ever sculpt puppets for stop motion uh, yeah maybe you just joined yeah no, I, I did some I did some puppets for uh, Cinderbite there was the only uh, for um, uh, uh, Henry Selick for Selick uh, you know I worked two years with him and then uh, Damon Ball was uh, another sculptor we worked together in the same room and then there was a great uh, was another sculptor we were like three maybe three four sculptor and um, usually but those, but those sculpts those are the sculpts that end up becoming the puppets yeah, sure. no, I show you. I have, I have a few sculpts over there. If you if you can wait like a couple of seconds, I'll show you. Oh, okay. I'll show, I'll show you two sculpts. Okay, I take two. I take, I take only two because those are pretty big <laughs> and pretty heavy too. <laughs> okay. So this was the first sculpt that I did for the for the Cinder Biter, and this one was um, you know I think it was a uh, uh, I remember the time uh, Jean is one of the sculptor at uh, Pixar. He started in the project, but this was really early, early, early days. This was maybe in 2000 and, uh, 2010, beginning of two thousand ten. So they they had the greenlit with the with the with the movie, and then uh, Jean was working with the. Because Jerome work work uh, on a night by before Christmas with, with, with Henry, so uh, and he start to block this this character, but then uh, uh, he, he didn't finish. And then uh, I think I think Henry want, wanted to, you know, wanted to see the character, so they call me, and then uh, you know I, I, I work on top, uh, and, it's, and it's kind of tricky because sometimes the when you work from some something already start, it's really difficult to. To find the, a, the right uh, solution, especially because if the director likes some parts of the sculpt, you, you have to keep it there. But then uh, you don't. Have, so so basically, you don't have to lose that one, but you have to put new new information into the sculpt. So so that, that was kind of a challenge. It was the first time I was working from uh, somebody else uh, starting point because I you know I like to start from scratch. So you you kind of really implement your view you implement uh, what what you want to express with the character for example the face uh, was um, an evolution from with tony fucile and uh, um who was the other guy the, um, lou romano the, lou romano was the production designer at tony uh basically was uh, he did some uh, some draw over and uh you know based on the on his draw draw over uh, you know, we came out with this code. But this was the first one that they show a, a, a Pixar, and basically they kind of uh, got uh, green lit uh, with the, let's say, green, green lit with the product, with the product. This was the same character, so you wanted to, I did the three version of this character, like a, a squash version, and uh, that is this one, like a neutral version, that uh, that is this one. And then uh, I did another one that was um, like a stretch pose, so the character was all uh, stretched, just to show that uh, the variety, like I was saying before, the variety of poses that you can do with this uh, with this uh, specific character. You know, the heaviness, the uh, the chunkiness, but it could be really kind of the form, the form too. So the, the animator they could take this one and they really did they did an amazing animation. You know, then it was a a supervisor animator that they start to uh, play around. Then obviously every every character is. I can show you. There's an armature here. An armature for a personal project. Basically, then when you have a character like this, you start. Okay, this is it's a different it's different armature. But the process to to have um, like a neutral pose, the clay, 
character, then then it's going to be uh, cast and then uh, build as a, as a puppet. And then usually we have uh, like the head is kind of separated. So basically you have a, you have a structure that where you almost the, the neck that you, where you take the, the replaceable face and you put it there. So each each frame they 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 uh, change uh, part of the face. In this case was only in this case was it's because it's uh, just a test for my personal project. So I just did the the, the 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 head in this way. But usually they kind of separate the face here around the around the area of the the hair. So it's easy to replace just the, the front part and the back part stay the same, connected to the skeleton. And then uh, sometimes they they they, they cut. Uh, over underneath the nose, so the so you can change the eyes uh, expression or the mouth expression for the different uh, uh, key poses that they really want to do. But uh, you know, this is what you know. And then obviously, it's a kind of uh, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting uh, process. It's really there is a lot of work to do behind, a lot of preparation, a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of energy put in this kind of. Uh, Process more, maybe more more than uh, I think more, more than, uh, than than a CG movie because it's um, it's it's all uh, uh, you have to materialize all these elements in the real world. So that is the the the, the tricky part. But you know, the nice part is that you can implement all different uh, uh, elements like three D printing, like uh, you know the background. Some most of the time they were like just cardboard, you know. So you fake you bring like the theater view. Of the of the of the imaginary world into the into the into the film view, so you can combine a lot of techniques. That is really it's pretty remarkable. It's pretty at least pretty unique, you know. And this kind of uh, yeah. But uh, no, the question was I did yeah I did <laughs> some puppet. Sorry, I went too long, you know. Oh, it's great. It's great seeing those puppets. Uh, I'm sure everybody appreciated that. So. Yeah, you okay, know, when you start talking about it, it almost feels like the difference between green screen, making films on green screen, versus building the sets and like, you know, Lord of the Rings and people can, it, it seems just so much more fun when you can see the world there. But I, I, th I think I think so, because the actor, you know, obviously you have to, you have to act in an environment that you, you don't see. So you have to imagine it's even more complex, I think. But obviously, you know, you can kind of open doors to solution that uh, when you see the final uh, final uh, aspect, it's it's incredible. But you know, living living in the set, even for the actors, I'm I'm sure is more is more appealing. It's more you feel more the the character that you want to express. I think it's more difficult to work on the green screen than uh, than with the real sets. You know, real especially in stop motion, you have to build the sets. You know, you have to build uh, because the character they have to move in. Uh, at least the ground plane, they have to move it. They have to move, so they have to oh, yeah. touch the ground plane. So but what I'm maybe saying is, it's like, you know, going to work and then walking towards your computer versus going to work and then going on to this beautiful stop motion set to animate. Ah, yeah, 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 it no, seems so much more fun. No, no, man. no it's, it's, really, it's really refreshing, but this, at the same time, it's really inspiring it really it, it really is i remember when i was going there i was really inspired to do to try to do the best that you can you know because obviously you see the level that is really high and there are just few people that they're doing this kind of job especially the opportunity to do a, a stop motion it's uh, pretty much unique so you know you know it's not easy uh, to get through it's not easy that you have a, a big studio that kind of put the money to do a stop motion um especially you know these days you know, I, I know that Henry is doing a project late now for Netflix. You know, so it's you know, like they're doing the, their their own project. But you know, if you see the budget, you know, they're a little bit different. Even the the money that make is different from the money the, the CG movie is making. So it's really you know, it's not easy to survive to doing uh, stop motion. So I'm glad that there are these studios that are still doing it. You know. And especially for a sculptor to work on a stop motion, it's uh, you know it's like uh, for a driver working, you know, drive um, a Formula One car, you know. <laughs> so to be one of these uh, twenty drivers that they, they drive these uh, super fast cars, you know, it must be incredible. It's, it's incredible. It's an incredible experience. You know, I was lucky to to be part of that. Uh, unfortunately, the movie never came out, but uh, just to be part of this kind of uh, environment was 
was incre- incredible. It wasn't easy, but was a, was incre- was a, was an incredible yeah. experience because you always remember the good the good things. You don't remember the bad things. So that is uh, for any, any project. Yeah, but uh, you know, it was a uh, was a really cool uh, experience. You know, really, and I'm glad that uh, they gave me the opportunity. Yeah. Here's an interesting question here from Tom Fro- Frobish. Um, oh. You know, a lot of people they carry they give advice saying carry around a sketchbook everywhere you go so you can draw and paint things like that. Um, is there kind of like a sculpting equivalent of that, like carrying around a little bit of Play-Doh or something? I don't know. But personally, I think you have to you have to go around and then uh, leave the world. You leave the experience. You know, when you leave the experience, when you leave uh, something good, is gonna you're gonna memorize. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna uh, you're gonna uh, absorb. And then when you do your own work, you could be like you're my own. For example, when, no, when I do my own uh, uh, sculpture, or even when you do work, you if, if the particular things really capture, you're gonna put it in the in the in the character or building or painting or wh- whatever you're doing. You know, so live live your life and then absorb your life. Is the it's not that you you sketch every day because I know people they don't sketch but they, they're amazing artists. You know. Everybody's different. You know? It's not that you have to do the sketch to become a good artist. You know, you have to. Uh, personally, I think you have to absorb the world. You have to absorb, live your life, and then uh, live well, enjoy your life, and then you're gonna enjoy your life. I think your art. You're gonna enjoy your art. You know, you you have to enjoy what you are doing. You know, it's not that you have to do this, this, this to get to the point. You know, you have to enjoy what you, what you, what you have here. And try to express it. You know that is that that is that I think is the difficult part. Here's one from Goli. Uh, Goli asks, "I'm a 2D artist and want to start sculpting. What is your advice for a beginner?" Uh, hmm. but, uh, for example, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to do publicity on my class. But you know, if you if you never sculpt, you know, I, I you know usually. You have to do something. First of all, you have to you have to try. You know, even if you don't do classes, you know, to take some clay and play around. You know, play like, like I started. I started. I remember I was I was playing with the. Uh, it's like a clay, uh, water based clay, argilla. We call them, um, and um, you know, it was a natural clay that you I could find uh, close to the beach. So I was doing taking this stuff and do li- little uh, faces. So I don't even remember, you know, what what I was doing. But you know, I was playing around. You know, have fun. First of all, you have to have fun, and then you know, obviously, when you, when you decide, okay, this may be something that uh, I really enjoy, something that I really want to do. You start to discover how you build. Maybe okay, if I want to do a humanoid, okay, how how this humanoid can stand. So you have to understand how to how to build an armature. Start, start to um, like I did. Yes, I did a really quick armature, and then uh, based on that quick armature, I can start to apply this clay. You know, I start to define the, what you want to express. Start to uh, try to discover what you have here and try to put it on uh, on this kind of a three dimensional uh, form. You know, so it's 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 a matter of discovering. You know, you can you know there are a lot of video I see on YouTube. You know, you can you can watch on uh, you can follow that. First of all, you have to choose which art which which artist you like. It's something that uh, is kind of uh, reassemble w- who you are, or maybe something that you would like to you 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 would love to be. You know. You, for example, you know, uh, I love uh, classical sculpture. I, I love classical uh, artists like a painter or a sculptor, like you know, Bernini and Michelangelo. These people. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm studying their work and try to express uh, what they what they were trying to to do with my small knowledge. You know, with with the, with the level of knowledge that uh, I'm at the, at the moment, and obviously. The more you go, the more you discover, the more you learn, the more you start to apply, the more you start to discover why why did this stroke in this way and they didn't do it the other way. There is, there is, a, there is a, a meaning behind this kind of stroke, this just wallet, or the other is more clean. So there is a why did it? Why did it in this sculpt and not in the other sculpt or in this painting, not, not, not in the other painting or, not, or in this drawing? So try to understand the, the, their mental approach and then you you can apply to, you know, to your <laughs> to your own on your work. No, it, it, you know, it's simple. It's simple to say, but no, it obviously takes years. 
you know, to starting, you have to j- just try, you know, try to take a piece of clay you know, and uh, play around. And then uh, if you see that you are confident, you look uh, somewhere else, you know, and then uh, you learn from uh, somebody else. So maybe, you know, in, in, as, I was, I was, as I was showing you before, you know, in my class, they come in uh, people that in different, uh, uh, completely different environment, you know, and then obviously everybody brings uh, through their knowledge because I'm not there, but, you know, I'm helping them to go in one path, you know, and then uh, in that direction, in this class, we went in one path, in one path. Maybe you take another class, you go in another path, or maybe you do your own stuff. You go, you take this one, this one, you do your own, your own way. That is, I think, the, you know, you learn, you, yeah, but then you have to do your own way. You have to, you have to express your own voice. That is the, you know, so, so it become you, something that uh, people recognize with you. Uh, who is this person? Is, is, uh, it's him, you know, or her, you know, uh, it's really unique, you know, this, um, well, I don't know if you, yes, but. Yeah. If you, if you don't mind, I'd just like to say, you know, uh, there's a lot of information out there about everything these days, but also you just want to make sure that the person that is talking hopefully did the things that you want to do that way you're, yeah, that, you're listening to the right person because anybody yeah. can make a youtube video i can make yeah. a youtube video and say i'm a master sculptor and i'm completely not right yeah 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 but these days bob is it's it's even easier to find the, the people that they never did this stuff you know with the internet you can just google and see these people you know you just sell uh, bs you know no especially you have to, you have to as you were saying, you have to follow, you know, people that they they did the work and then and that because when you do the work, you know, you can do the work, but it's difficult to te- to to <laughs> to transfer what you know, you know, uh, that is is the difficult part, you know, to try to transfer your your knowledge to other people, you know, and then uh, you know there, there are f- few people around, you know, especially no, especially I don't want to do publicity for school, but the, all the artists that are there, there are people that I work with in the past. And they're really, they're professional. They work in the field, you know. That that is the I think is the key. And then they're really good teacher too, because they can express, they can tell you what they feel, what they express, what they what they bring on the table. They they every day, especially they live, they they, they make a living with what they what they are doing, what their passion. That is not easy to to do these days. It's not uh, it's not really easy, but you know. They, they, they are, they are, um, I can see all, all the people. They're pretty um, appas- uh, passionate to 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 give what they have, what they have, what they have learned. You know, so it's uh, no, it's pretty remarkable <laughs> if you think about. Uh, no, it's uh, yeah. Well, when, when, I, when I grew up, there was no internet, so there were so we were we were going through a uh, museum to. So there were no artists that would tell you, okay, I'll do this one because of this, this, this because. Of that. So the, today we are we have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of really good artists around that they can they, they teach, and uh, you know at the time when I, when I when I grew up uh, there was not you you have to go there and try to find the solution. I mean, uh, especially for animation, you know, we, you know coming from Italy, you know, we didn't have uh, uh, this big culture like the United States uh, we have about animation mo- animated movies. So we were looking for books, events like. Uh, uh, like uh, almost like light light boxes for no, no, 20 years ago or more there were you know, there were like one or two animation festival in Europe or th- three so you you were taking your train you were going to an Annecy or you were going to Treviso you were going to other festival and uh, to try to meet these artists try to uh, see if uh, there was a um, maybe a job obviously, obviously looking for a job you know looking for a exchange and uh, today, you know, it's really, uh, I think it's easier, but you have to know where to look that, uh, because it's too much, there's too much stuff around, you know. There is too much stuff. And uh, perhaps if everybody looks in the bottom right hand corner of their screen, they would see a little link that says Andrea teaches on, on schoolism. I know, uh, Andrea, you don't like to uh, no, no, commercialize but... <laughs> your stuff, no, no. but I will do it for you. And uh, Andrea has worked on many things, including Oscar winning things like into the spider verse so definitely uh legit and amazing teacher and of course those examples you showed are remarkable yeah, I, can you, I can show you other stuff you know i, I, I know i had the i had the you know let me see i have a few shots that you know few 
little things that I can show you now. So those was, uh, yeah, this I did it, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, before the movie came out. This was for for Seoul, was a wear exploration that, uh, you know, a friend of mine was um, the, the, one of the designers there, Daniel Lopez Munoz. So this was uh, uh, Dorothea, one of the first uh, uh, idea or sketches for the design. Are you, sh are you sharing the wrong screen right now? Oh, really? Okay, sorry. I go back. Let me see. Stop present. Let me see. Sorry, guys. Okay, now, yeah, I, I had too many windows. Now you can see, right? Wait one sec. Yes. Yeah, you can see. So, okay, so <laughs> thank you, Bob. <laughs> so, th so this was Dorothy. You know, this was one of the first take that I did for Dorothy. You know, obviously, this was the two characters. L like I was saying before, I'd like to do it uh, in the same scale. So basically, there were two different designers. I don't remember who did this one, but uh, this was Daniel Lopez. We are uh, we are good friends. We worked together at Blue Sky a long time ago, and then uh, he went to Pixar, he became production designer. Then he was um, one of the main designer for uh, for Soul. This was obviously for uh, Spider Man for uh, Miles, and these are you the, the the stuff that you see. This was the supporting for the sculpt. You know this kind of aluminum. Uh, a quarter inch wire so i was sculpting usually i try to sculpt in the same uh, uh, in the pose of the drawing and then uh, uh, make sure that everything works uh, you know based on the drawing and based on the stuff and those are all uh, channels that when you do a cast you need to um, create this kind of uh, channels just to make sure that the material can go everywhere and uh, at the end you have the, uh, the the final maquette that is this one that is coming out uh, Cleaner and with all the details and all uh, all the elements, you know. This was uh, yeah, the one that I showed you before, the real sculpture. But you know, I kind of like to to lit even the sculpt like 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 I'm doing with the CG to have a nice, a really strong light so the director can see the the the, the structure of the characters. Yeah, this is the one that, that I show you the real sculpt. Uh, is the height? You know, usually I send even. Uh, you know, I put a measure tape so they can see exactly because when you work remotely, they don't know how tall is the sculpt, so they can imagine uh, easily. This was, um, you know, as, as I show you, as I show in my class, it's the same process that uh, I'm using with the with the designer. So I send the different Im images of the sculpt, and then the further we go, the further we have more uh, like uh, details. So, for example, here we change the, the you know the, the position of the arms of the hands. Before we were going with in this direction, then they, they realize uh, that maybe we want to push it, uh, you know, a little bit more graphic, a little bit more behind. Uh, so they, they they kind of draw the direction of the the logo. So in the first Spider-Man, we, we were going back and forth with the 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 height of the logo, the size of the logo. So every time I was kind of uh, um, tracing the logo into the sculpt. So then I, I came up with this kind of translucent paper. Then I draw the the. The design of the mask and then the design of the the logo and then i was kind of shifting uh the logo up and down when they were say just to find the position of the right uh, logo and then when, when they were happy i was uh, kind of uh, you know uh, carving the logo and carving the mask like in this case you see that they told me you know bigger so i would have take that one and then scale it up until uh, you get to the same uh, relationship because otherwise you know you can go back and forth for uh, for weeks so you have to sometimes you have to try to resolve these kind of uh, uh, problems in a, in a fastest way. Hey, can I just mention something? Uh, somebody's asking in the audience: uh, Do you have any sessions coming up in Schoolism in your Schoolism class with feedback? And I just want to let that person, yeah, yeah. Amanda, know that uh, yes, uh, the next class is currently open for registration. We're registering right now, and class starts on october 25th october yeah yeah yes that is the usually uh, this year i only did um i think three classes so you know it's it, sometimes i don't have a lot of uh, uh you know opportunity to do the class because of for work relation you know because i have a lot of, I have, I have some project that they, they kind of combine together so and it takes effort to follow to follow the student too so you know i want to make sure that uh, all the students they kind of uh, they get followed pretty pretty well you know, I spend the same amount of time with them. Uh, the, you know, obviously they put a lot of effort, and then uh, you know, I know, I know some for some people maybe 
it's a it's a big um, uh, expense that they have to you know so I, I try to give the best that I can to all the students try to give a uh, uh, the same amount of time and try to you know give more than I can you know so <laughs> and I think you guys can could see from the from the from the process of that that I show you was uh, you know from the result of the student uh, the quality was really pretty pretty incredible you know pretty incredible this was a project I worked with some friends uh, at Tonko House you know they asked me to do this little pig it is a usually to preserve the uh, the sculpt you need to do a cast so you have to do a, a resin cast but usually I build uh, this kind of uh, um, uh, cocoon almost like a, a plaster shell around the sculpture and then I cut and then I I pour the silicone inside the um, inside this kind of uh, uh, plaster mold, and then uh, I'm able to reopen it. And then obviously the, the sculpture is going to be all around with the, with silicone. And then I have to cut the, the silicone and then release the the clay sculpture. And then after that, uh, I can create uh, the the raising cast. So this is a really a quick quick way out to um, explain how you do a casting, but. Uh, you know there are video there are videos on online there are videos you can find uh, a lot of stuff I, i'm not teaching the the, the casting class because uh, i did it once online it was a it was a nightmare on my side so it was really difficult to it was really difficult to especially because you know i'm not there with the students so usually i do the casting class here in my studio so i'm 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 present with them and then i can help them because uh, you know you can get really tricky especially when you if you don't mix it the right proportion, if you don't do it uh, the in the right way, and it takes years to get to a, to a, to a really good uh, uh, knowledge uh, how to cast. Obviously, the more complex uh, the sculpt is, like like this one that I have here. This I did, I did it for a Bioshock. This was one of the most more, more complex uh, character to cast because uh, there were fourteen uh, pieces small, so it's really difficult to you know. You have to plan a lot, and then yeah, especially because you want to make sure that uh, you know you don't destroy. Because when you cast, you destroy the region. So when you destroy the region, you have to make sure you have a you have a, a resin cast that you can use it. You know, because it can be that uh, you you do the you do the mold and then you destroy everything and then uh, everything is gone. So it's a it's a tricky tricky process, interesting process that uh, you know you can do. But you know the. the in, in in the class that I'm doing, you know, obviously I'm trying to bring everybody to the same uh, result, you know. And everybody is different, so we will have different results. But we start from the same uh, uh, drawing, and the same uh, structure. So that uh, that one thing that you know, it's pretty, it's kind of cool, you know, because everybody see the different uh, uh, result, different uh, uh, ending of the sculpt. But yeah, the next class is going to be in October. You know, so somebody. Now, usually I have only 10 people in the class because I don't want to have a uh, maximum 10. So I don't want to have uh, like 20 people so I, I can spend time with them. So it's more, uh, it's the same way that I'm doing my class here in the studio. So I, I have a uh, maximum 10 people, usually eight people in the studio because I can spend more time with them. You know, I know there are, there are classes that with 30, 35 students and uh, maybe in a week of sculpting, you, you see the teacher only 20 minutes, you know, and you spend like, Maybe double of the price that we that you spend, uh, you know, in, in this class. You know, I try to to condense it, reduce it, and make sure that everybody uh, has the same amount of time uh, that uh, I can spend with them. You know, spend with them, you know, the same amount of time. Yeah. So, for people in the North California area, the Northern California area, um, do you have any in-person classes? Uh, obviously not now with the COVID, you know, it's kind of uh, tricky. Now, sometimes we start to, you know, the situation start to get better, you know. Usually, you know, I, I'm planning, I would love to do one around here. But uh, obviously, last year I had to cancel a couple of workshops because, uh, you know, with the COVID, nobody felt uh, really safe to, you know, to do a class. Usually the class, they're outside, they're in the garden. So... It's an open environment. I only did a couple of classes inside because the the temperature outside was kind of uh, cold. So the people, uh, you know, we were kind of freezing our ourselves. So we went, we came in the studio. Unfortunately, the, the group of people was kind of small. So we were like six at the time. But um, I'm planning maybe, 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 I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe next year, maybe next spring when everything starts to relax, uh, calm down, or maybe 
I'll do other capital class uh, up here in the studio, you know. Yeah, I wonder when it'll be okay to start doing schoolism workshops again, you know. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I remember that was uh, was really <laughs> was really nice, uh, especially because it's, it, it, one thing that I miss is the interaction, you know, the interaction with the with the student, with the people, you know. Even now, you know, we try to do this, we try to get this, give the same feeling, but obviously online is different. I like to see the people, I like to even uh, people maybe they they're feeling intimidated just to send a test, uh, uh, send a, send a question. I remember when we were doing like the live uh, workshop. The questions that were coming or they were flowing because the people were really engaged and was uh, was re was really co was, it's a really cool uh, environment you know I, I i miss that one i miss the i miss this kind of uh, relationship you know exchange and i uh, hope soon we can do it you know yeah no i know i know yeah. but was, at least uh, you know online so many more people are able to join in and watch and everything you know no, that is that is true, yeah. That is, I was really amazed when yesterday you told me that people from Iran or, or from uh, all over the world, it's, it's pretty incredible. If you think about it, it's pretty incredible. It's pretty incredible. How we can be unified only in one moment, you know, one hour from all, all around the world. It's pretty, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's, crazy. it's, crazy. it's yeah, kind of cool. Uh, we have a question in the audience. Um, I'm not sure if there's a different answer for this, but this person okay. is asking... When you're working from comic book, uh, you know, working from comic book references like Spider Verse, uh, was there any change in your process? If so, how? Uh, okay, so uh, for example, I'm not a really. I'm trying to find the the presentation that you know the, the, you can see the process with the the study from uh, Shun drawing. But I'm I'm trying. To, so basically, I. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't a big. Uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, uh, comic book art. So I'm, I'm not. I'm not a comic book art, artist. So, but um, I'll, I when when they when they ask me to, hey, I found one. that you can show you. I can show you. This one. Maybe I can share this one with you guys, so you, so so you can see where I, where I start. One, one second. Let me get the. But but uh, you know w w it was really uh, strange for me to be first of all I didn't expect to do something like uh, yeah share the screen so you guys can see the 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 process that I did for Spider Man you know um, it's it's a quick presentation that I did for uh, you know for one of the studio in Los Angeles when I when I, when I go around maybe even I, I show the same when we were going to you know to the schoolism uh, uh, presentation. I go page views. Okay, to one page, single, single page. Okay, let me see if I can turn like this. No, sorry. Yeah. But uh, so basically, I, I start. Uh, you know, so this is the process that uh, is clicking. Ah, oh, fuck. You get uh, one sec. Sorry, guys. Uh, bear with me. Show you. Open me. I want to flip it, but I don't want to start to. Okay, if it's flicking, you know, you it's okay. So this was the design that I start. Uh, so when when the when the comics, it was a at the beginning we were, we were going like to to be a little bit more uh, stylized, a little bit more uh, elongate the shape of the spy of Spider. -Man. Obviously, Shun did. Uh, I don't know many versions just to to get to this point, and then uh, uh, when they when they call me, so this was one of the first uh, um, uh, sketch that they, that they gave me, and then I start to work from that one. So this was the first uh, uh, rough that I did, and then I send it to the studio, and then uh, they gave me some notes on the on the pose. So basically, it took like like I was showing before, you know, with the other Spider Man. And start to draw on top. So this is the the the, the communication between designer, sculptor, and uh, um, and all the the, the first uh, uh, stage of the production. You know? So as you move the arm a little bit more, start to define this kind of uh, rhythm here. The mask. Uh, we were at the beginning. We were thinking to do more like a uh, con um, concave shape, but then we became. Uh, 
to go away from that uh, from their shape. So this was uh, uh, the second uh, the second raft that I sent to them, uh, and then obviously I sent like a turnaround of the skull plus a different uh, view of the skulls, different pictures, and then they they pick the one that they really want to use, and they give me notes on that one. So he picked that one, and then uh, we start to shift uh, the, the the shape here, the pose. Before you know, the, you want to have a little bit more elongate, and then maybe uh, move the move this uh, this this like here, move the like there, and then uh, for this I kind of create this kind of a really um, easy armature, like uh, like I was uh, was showing yesterday, that you can easily move around and uh, tweak the pose too if 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 needed. And then this, for example, especially here, we start to you see from this pose, we start to open the the, the legs even more. Because he wanted to give this kind of uh, flow, you know, uh, and then you know. So if you have uh, an armature that is kind of uh, too, um, how you say, too, um, uh, not too flexible, so you can change, uh, and you're gonna ruin a lot of work that you did uh, uh, previously. So you need to have a flexible uh, armature that you can uh, do this kind of drastic tweak, tweaking here and there. Then this was the final one. Of, we were getting the, uh, to the final stage. Obviously, obviously Spider-Man was one of the main characters, so we spent a little bit more time on him because it was the you know the symbol of the all the movie. So we were find the design, uh, the the style of the movie into the skull, the way how we were treating the plane, the way how we were treating uh, uh, the form, uh, the lines, uh, you know the uh, the, the shapes. Uh, so all this stuff were really important to define it here and then you start to draw um obviously the <clears throat> the, the costume then uh, the eye line was really important you see like like i was saying before that i was drawing i was carving i was carving the you know the line of the uh, the high line the mask uh, then uh, you know he erased the, the old uh, he erased the mask so i have to uh, take off all this stuff and then raise raise the mask and then I dis and then I found uh, you know this kind of trick uh, to to use the transparent paper. And then when we obviously when we were happy with the with the with the sculpt, we decide to you know obviously send a lot of videos. And uh, uh, when they give me the okay, I I start to like I show you before. I'm scanning the I'm scanning the sculpt. And then uh, you know I have uh, this uh, scan data. That is pretty close to the to the sculpt. Is the a little bit higher resolution of it at the time? I didn't scan it, so they scan it uh, uh, as Sony. So I had to do a cast and then send the cast, and then they were able to to get all all the detail in there, and then they remesh uh, uh, the sculpture. And then obviously, you know, one of the first steps is to like like I was showing before with the with the Lupin. And make sure that uh, the sculpture is working really well in the three-dimensional, uh, in the three D environment. So in, it's the important the silhouette, really iconic. Uh, you know, obviously the character has to be iconic, so it has to be readable with a really simple silhouette. It's really important for the for everything. And then when you have all the all this kind of information there, and then just matter to transfer, maybe define a little bit more those planes there. I think they kept a lot of the those edges. In the you know in the final model, and then the, obviously it become another the, another department where they study how we gonna implement the muscle and make sure that uh, we can kind of keep this kind of graphiness to the to the structure to the muscle. So that was another you know another department. This was uh, the sculpture that I showed you before. Seen but scan it. Hey Andrea, before we yeah. uh, move too far yeah, from Spider Man, I yeah. want to ask you know Spider Man, Marvel, they are. Mm -hmm. They are people's dreams. They're dream jobs. Okay. Did you, did you, were you a Spider-Man fan before the movie? And it's okay if you say no. I'm just wondering. I, I to be honest, and I, I, no, I I grew up. I, no, I grew up uh, uh, with different kind of. Uh, I was I was fan more of Miyazaki movies, more uh, you know. Anime, anime, anime stuff. Then uh, comics. No, I didn't. I didn't read a lot of comics. I was. Really, I have friends that were really into this, into the Spider-Man character. You know, but I, I wasn't really a comic book uh, 
uh, fan. So for me, it was a little bit tricky when they when they asked me to to work on that one, and uh, because you know, so I'm not really a big fan, you know, something that. Uh, but then I learned that uh, from something that you you don't feel comfortable, you can be, you know, you can learn a lot, you know. So uh, especially, I, I kind of like as I told you before, uh, work with Sean. So for me, it was more like working with him than uh, working on the project, you know. And then the project became uh, what what it what it became. It was really incredible to be part of this uh, this team you know to be to to have my name on uh, in the movie that uh, at the end won won the oscar but not just won the oscar but i think kind of give uh, uh, i think it's like a game change you know for the industry and i can see the latest movie they start to work more this kind of snappy animation even the colors even the the treatment of the character more stylized so maybe we kind of give uh, an input to the industry to go in a different direction not the same uh, the same stuff we oh, see yeah. for not for here. So that so that, at all. Like uh, yeah, I heard so many times on projects that I worked on after Spider Verse, they would always start off going, "Okay, we're going to do something different, kind of like Spider Verse," you know. And that yeah. was they've said that so many times. So, congratulations on. Yeah, no, I'm 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 I'm, I'm lucky too, and then uh, you know I have to thanks uh, you know Shun and uh, I don't know a lot other people that they, they call me. So there was the director, you know, you know Peter and then uh, and, and uh, Bob. You know they were really at the time because when I started, there were only two directors, and then it became three. So, but uh, you know, right, Rodney yeah. was more involved in the story. Later in the story, yeah. I, I think later in the story. Yeah, when I worked, there were only. Uh, Bob and, um, and uh, Peter, uh, Peter. Yeah, Peter. Yeah. Um, so somebody is asking. It's just a. It's the question in there. I I know you mentioned it before, but somebody was asking what type of scanner do you use? And uh, Andrea needs to get the money first from the scanner company, right? Or I don't know. Do you want to? No, I, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, I feel we no, because we do we do a lot of uh, publicity, you know, for free. Yeah. No, I mean, it's a it's a scan that uh, you know it's you know you can find uh, around. It's it's a good scanner, you know. They're obviously a better scanner, but you know, for a person like me, you know, it's it's more than enough just to the scanner for me is more like to capture the idea in clay and then bring it to the three D and then work in three D. So that is it's like a tool for me. It's part of my tools, you know. So and then. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm sure that I'm going to find a better scanner, but, uh, you know, you know, I'm sorry if I can tell you that I don't want to do free publicity to to these companies. You know, so. Totally understand. And uh, I yeah. want to ask, um, you were saying Miyazaki. Uh, I guess I'm assuming you probably never worked on a Miyazaki movie, but uh, have you no. done any? Uh, I've, I've... Have you? No? No, right? That, that, no, work on Miyazaki. No, 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 no. No, I would love. I would have loved to, you know. Yeah, but uh, you know. Would you ever do any fan art sculptures like what you did with some of the other I, films you've? Uh... I, I did one. I did. Uh, I did the Totoro. You know, I did. I did it for my daughter. You know, because she she loved Totoro. So when she turned uh, ten, I did this little Totoro for her. Then I did a version painted. I can show you if you guys have two minutes. Uh, it's on the other room. I can grab it and show it to you. I'd love to see that. Yeah, I, yeah. I think all of us would do, love to. Yeah. Sure, really quick. So I did it that long time ago. Yeah, 2010. Maybe it's like yeah, 11 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, this was one of the. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, the umbrella is somewhere, you know, you know, obviously. <laughs> he has the umbrella here, so you can see, but you can, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of cool. And then I paint it, so I try to, you know, with the acrylics, so I try to give the same colors, you know, that it's in, it's in the movie. And, uh, yeah, this was, I, I, I like, like, one thing, that, you know, obviously the story, they're that, that amazing. The story, is, uh, the story time is really, really good. And uh, but I like the, the simplicity of the character, you know, certainly the motion, the motion of the characters that the the, the, the Miyazaki really can uh, can tell, you know. This, and this and, and I like that it's something different, you know, something that uh, something different from uh, you know the American market, European market, and something uh, unique, you know. I like I like that. I like that. Uh, I like when artists, when that story, storyteller or director, they give their own uh, 
uh, view, but then it's completely different from something that you that, that you see before. So that uh, that that is the is the one of the keys. You know, try to to do something different, not not a copy of the copy or something else. You know? yeah. But I would love, to, yeah, would we'll love to work with the guy. The, uh, what's that? I would love to work with Zach. Yeah, I would love to work. With, yeah, everybody would love to work with him. You know? I'm sure he's not an easy guy to work with. You know, but uh, because he has a good, uh, he's a good director. You know, he has his own view. So, uh, but you know, just to be in the in the in the in the studio in Japan, that would be incredible. Yeah. Do you like Japanese that. food? You you'll survive on the Japanese food. I don't know. Maybe no, but no. Japanese, uh, Italian, they're pretty much they have the same temper. I think. So I know I've I've some Japanese friends, you know, they we, we work together. You know, we at Dice is Japanese, so we work together. Oh, you yeah, know, I, I the, love Japanese food, so I could stay. On, there on the on forever. the yeah, no, yeah. On the Dan Keeper we work pretty well, you know. No, there's a lot no one thing that I like there is a lot of respect. I like I like that I like that, you know. There's a respect from both sides and uh, you know, when it, when there is a respect you can do you can accomplish incredible things, yeah. That's Somebody the, uh, was saying in the audience, they were saying uh, they would love to see you do Akira. I don't know if you like that movie, yeah. but that would be oh, so Akira. cool. I, I, watched, I watched Akira, you know, when when he came out in Italy. It was a uh, man, long time ago. You know, I, mean, I remember. Yeah, it was it was it was it was incredible. Yeah, it was really everybody was blowing out. You know, about uh, the, the, the the you know the and I, I think I, I made the director a dream. Was he came. Uh, Otomo came to Dreamers. He was supposed to do a, a movie for Dreamers, but then uh, obviously I think he discovered that uh, you know, or maybe Dreamers discovered that he he was the director, not Dreamers was the director, so they they, they didn't work out. But uh, it was a uh, was incredible to meet to to meet him, and uh, you know, really he knew he knew what he wanted to do with the movie, you know. And uh, this was a long time ago. This was more maybe more than twenty years ago. Yeah, he came. Yeah. It was uh, right after Akira came out. Yeah. Wow! Now we we'll love to do it. Yeah, Akira. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe one day, five time. You know, uh, you know. When you get older, you you get lazy. You know, you don't want to do anything. So that uh, <laughs> that is tr- that is the tricky part. You know, to to keep you motivated. You know, to do stuff. So that. Uh, so okay, maybe. then say we go into the future. You're seventy years old. Do you still want to be working? Working for my stuff, yeah. Oh, working for yourself, so then retire. Yeah, for myself until uh, until you die. I think you know artists. They're gonna work. It's, I don't call work, but they're gonna do stuff for themselves until they until they die. I think you know. No, obviously work work. Uh, uh, you know, if I can, I would I would stop today to don't work. But uh, you know, obviously you can. You have to pay the bills, and then uh, you know you have always looking for for the next. But but one thing that you know if. Even if I'm 75 or 80, and then uh, a guy say, "No, we're doing this project, and then uh, we work together," I, I will do it. If if I like the guy, if I like the person, if I like the environment, I will do it. And if I can still do it, I will do it. You know, you know now with the with the age that is getting, uh, you know, you are getting older, so I start to feel some pain on the, on your your arms, your hands, you know, the the shoulder. So I start to I start to get really, you know, sometimes I start to get. <laughs> Because it's a physical job, so it starts to get uh, difficult. Even, even with the computer, you know, the carpal tunnel, you know, you know, even if you use the the tablet, you know, you, you feel it. You know, you start to feel it more. So, but if it's an interesting project, of course, you know, with the people, with the, with the, with the right people, you know, because that is the key. I think that is the that is why why I'm still doing this stuff. You know, yeah. Something I'm having... I, I wonder about is you're mentioning in in the beginning you had a lot of your influences because you went to the museums in Italy and of course um, those statues tend to be quite big did you do you have any aspirations any dreams of doing something big or have you already I, I did something big like something big I did I did this a 3d print of the sculpt that I did uh, you know it's kind of big you know but uh, it's not but it's not it's maybe it's like 20. 20 plus inches you know I, I was kind of uh, now I'm curious to do this kind of stuff in uh, clay zebra 3d printed and then uh, you know see how the form uh, can change between my, especially for my for my personal stuff I did uh, like a few runners uh, uh, lately you know inspired by this kind of uh, you know by the Olympics I did before the Olympics you know but uh, now I have some ideas that I want to kind of deform the, the the shapes of the body 
and uh, you know, do it in clay before, and then scan it, and then uh, rework in the brush, push it in the brush, and then uh, 3D print it just to see the the feeling of the the form, how it can. Uh, uh, start from clay and then go to digital and then uh, going back to a three-dimensional form. It's kind of it's kind of cool. And uh, how how you can push it, you know, how you can play around with the, and it's kind of fun to do. No, but it is it's a personal stuff, so a personal uh, thing that I, I like to do that on it. But bigger stuff, I would love to do something. But I don't have the space, you know. I don't have the space. I would love to. Once I remember, we almost did the, this one in, uh, in bigger scale. We almost did this one for like six, seven feet tall. We were thinking to do a bronze, but then uh, it never it never happened. Have you ever but, done uh, bronze? Uh, yeah, I did bronze. Yeah, I had bronze. You know, I have some bronzes here, but small small scale. You know, not not really big, but small 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 scale. But then I can show you. Uh, so before I do it in uh, in raising. So so this one is it's like a raising uh, cast, and then I do this one. It's a, it's, it's the bronze. Uh, you, know, you can see there. It's the bronze. Uh, uh, sculpture. Wow. And then you do the patina, but the, no, that year would be nice to do something really big. But you know, obviously, it start to become uh, co- no, it start to become expensive because to do bronzes is pretty. You know, it's a, first of all, it's a lot of work behind because you have to do the chisel, you have to chisel, you have to uh, do the mold, do the parts, do the wax, and then bring it to the foundry, and then uh, make sure that the wax has the same. Uh, Thickness all around, so th- well, because do the wax. Do it for you? No, usually I, I do the wax. I do the wax because um, if they do it for you, you have to pay the wax. You have to pay the process from the mold to the bronze. Oh. When I when I bring the wax, basically I cut the price in uh, enough. So so basically, you know, I don't, let's say one piece costs a thousand bucks, you can pay five hundred bucks. You know, so basically with the price of one, you can do two sco- two two bronzes. If if you want to do a uh, limited run, but uh, you know, and, and I kind of like to uh, to control the all the process up to the fund up to up to the uh, foundry up to the bronze, and then obviously you have to go back. You have to check that uh, basically all the all the details that, you, that I don't know if you guys can see because it's a little bit dark, but you know the face is is pretty much the same. You know, the pretty all the details that you have here they are, they are over there. Because when you do the wax, basically the wax it, it, it maintains exactly the same. Uh, maybe you can see on the shoulder, you see all these kind of marks. They're pretty much the same. So you have to check that uh, the 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 process didn't get didn't damage the the quality, the detailing of the of the sculpt. And then they do the pat- then we do the patina. The patina we do the patina with them directly. So usually I'm there. There's a, there's a foundry close by in uh, in Berkeley where where I, where I usually go. And I know the, the the owner owner is Italian, so he's an Italian guy. So he he, he always give me you know good advice, good pricings, and then uh, no, it's, it's a it's a nice, it's really supporting the the art around the the Bay, the Bay Area. It's really it's really cool, you know. And he's doing a really big sculpture, big uh, uh, casting bronze. So th- maybe before I, before I die, I do a bigger sculpture. You know? I don't know where I'm gonna do it, but I don't know where I'm gonna. <laughs> No, I told my daughter when when I die, all this crap. You have to, it's all it's all on you. Eh? She she was she was laughing because you know we have a lot of, between Alessandra and me. You know, we have a lot of uh, stuff around. So now I'm I'm at the I'm at the process that I wanna I'm gonna tr- I'm throwing away all the stuff that uh, that I don't use now because I have a lot of molds and uh, so I'm kind of uh, keeping one cast and then the rest and then I, I destroy the mold. At least to, to preserve one copy, but then because otherwise I, I can't move around here. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it looks pretty, or you know, it doesn't look uh, chaotic, but it's pretty. You know, it's pretty. There's a lot of crap around. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I can imagine, like especially when you're talking about uh, the stop motion movies. You know, you do two stop motion movies. If that's your company, you need to get a whole warehouse to stop uh, yeah, yeah. stuff, right? No, no, it's true. Yeah, true. Fortunately, I'm, I'm 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 working smaller, so my set. I did a set, but it's not really big, you know, because you have to play with what you can, uh, you know, what you can achieve, you know. Obviously, if I would have done a bigger set, you know, I don't, I, I couldn't do it, you know, couldn't do, I couldn't do smaller, st- bigger stuff, yeah. 
so that my ceiling they're not really tall so the and the space uh, you know is uh, is limited so you have to rent a place where you can do when you can do a stage where you can do a set there when you can play around uh, where you can make sure that uh, you know you, you can achieve what you want even for the camera if you need a long lens and you need space to go shoot from far away you know i don't i don't have that one for this i'm doing smaller stuff you know, i'm doing i'm concentrating more on smaller stuff especially for the production is you, know, you know you don't need a bigger bigger sculpture you have to do much more stuff you know? Amanda G is very interested in uh, your work with Tonko House. Um, she asks, how was it working with Tonko House? And I want to add, you know, what, what would be the difference? Like uh, working for them, how would you describe it? But it's, it's like, um, you know, um, I, I work- Paint and draw like incredibly well. That's maybe- Yeah, yeah. Thing. No, no, it was, was, uh, was, was uh, first of all, it was nice uh, because, um, you know, Work, working with friends sometimes it could be tricky because obviously uh, can can create this kind of friction because you know you know the person so you it's not that you don't know the other you know the, and then obviously they were starting their own company so I was really happy to help them at in, at the beginning no they were starting they were still they were still at Pixar you know when they when I did the first Tonko house they were they, and then uh, they moved to the studio so I did other Scott why they were in the new studio so it's but it was nice because there was um, this kind of participating something uh, uh, creative that they were trying to build, uh, not build, they were trying to tell their own story through the shorts and uh, try to do something that they did for other people, but for themselves. So I, I always respect that one. And, uh, you know, if I can help and if it can be in the kind of process, that was, uh, that is really nice. And it was, it was, it was a nice experience, Ro work with Robert and, uh, I didn't know Robert well, like like I knew Dice, but I discovered Robert later, and uh, you know it's really it's really a remarkable person. And but all the people that worked there, Chris Sasaki was work was working there. I worked with Chris on uh, uh, a few design for the hip, I think, the, for uh, uh, for the short, uh, and then uh, he was working with them uh, for other stuff. So it's, it's more like it was a collaboration with the uh, with friends, and then when you work with friends, you know. You can, uh, I, I think you can't, uh, you you can't go wrong, you know. I think it went well. It went well with me. So, as um, you know, maybe you know, maybe I was lucky, you know. But uh, was was a nice, um, was different. It was a different experience because obviously the, there was a lot of on the table. They they wanted to prove that they could do it, and I think they did it. And uh, I was happy to to be, you know ready to help them you know in, the, in my little uh, you know what, what i could do you know i was open to to help them what, but it was a nice a nice experience yeah well they are both incredible artists and of course uh well respected uh both directors i, I want to ask what's the difference between the two of them <laughs> uh, can i say I no <laughs> No, if you don't want to say it's fine. We could... No, 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 no. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to offend the dice or Robert. You know, the, the different. Um, um, They're both amazing. No, no, no. But I, I like, as I told you, I like both of them. You know, I know dice a little bit more because we were working in New York together. So I knew I knew dice from Blue Sky, and uh, I always admire him. Is a uh, is a remarkable skills. Even the the willing to teach is is a is a good teacher too, and uh, remember. Um, we, especially Blue Sky was a nice energy uh, with the with the with the art department. So they were really really good artists and uh, less uh, BS between uh, between them. So everybody was really positive, you know, to try to do something unique. And Dice was one of these person that was really pushing the group. You know, maybe I can see Dice is more like a leadership compared to Robert. But Robert even now is is doing uh, something that um, I'm really surprised because he's a, he's an amazing artist. And then I don't know how he does it because uh, basically now he's stepping beside to let Dice uh, do his own, uh, uh, let's say, movie. He's more like an executive producer, Bob, uh, Robert. And uh, I'm, I, I don't know if I, if I could do it because uh, I would be in the same position that I want to do the same that Dice is doing. You know what I mean? So I really respect a lot Robert for that. I don't know how he does it. I think that uh, his ego maybe. It's a little bit too low. It should be a little bit higher. <laughs> but um, um, what else? No. Uh, 
I, I, I disc- as I told you, I discovered Robert after him. And, and I really, I, I, I like him a lot. You know, I like him a lot because he's really sincere. And uh, he's really, uh, I, I like, I like the, I like the, not that Dice doesn't, does, Dice has the same sincerity that Robert has. has, has. But um, they're two different person. And the one thing that maybe I told Robert, you know, don't, don't, don't don't let it go too much, you know. You have, because you you are you are good too, you know. You have to um, don't don't push yourself. Uh, not, not, maybe it's difficult to say. You know, be 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 be, be no. You guys are all together the same. Uh, you know, it's fifty fifty. You know, because this is why why you guys can go in the same direction. You know? But don't push you down too much. You know, this may be one thing that uh, I can see between the two. The robber will will uh, will step back to let. Dice go, and uh, it's pretty remarkable. It's pretty remarkable if you think about. It. They're both at the same level, you know. Because I remember I was working on a on a on a character, and uh, you know, I got, I would have put my hand on the fire that uh, Dice drew the, the character, and the uh, Dice that turn and say, "No, Robert did." They say, "No, no way, you did this one." I say, "No, no, Robert did this," and then I turned to Robert and said, "But you did the yeah, yeah, I did the painting." I said, "Really? It was a." If you see that, if you you say no, Dice did the painting. It's amazing how they they really uh, become one person. That that is really it's really remarkable. They become one person, and then uh, it's really I don't know. I don't know if Dice could have done it with other other artists like he's doing with Robert. I think that um, it's, it's it's pretty it's pretty unique. It's pretty unique. You know? Oh yeah, and to have the the bravery of leaving Pixar, which is many people's lifelong goal, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but, but, but um, Bob, yeah, I, I can understand because I can relate it because a lot of people, they would will, they will like to do the same, but they don't have the guts to do it, you know, because uh, they put everything on the line to follow the, their dream. And then uh, it showed that, uh, you know, if you follow the dream, sooner or later, you know, you, you can achieve the dream. And then uh, they're still fighting because I'm sure they're still fighting to to push themselves. But uh, you know, it's pretty remarkable, as you as you say. You know, it's, it's not easy to do it. It's easy to be confident. But I think when you get comfortable, is when you when you start to die. You know, when you when you you start to lose the the the, the curiosity. You start to lose the this kind of uh, thinking to to want to learn. Things and they want, they want, they want to learn to be direct, to be storytelling. And they, obviously, they're looking at some samples like Miyazaki. They they try to do the the same. I don't say the same thing, but they try to tell this their own story. Like same learning from it. yeah, by, by independence. You know, yes. it's pretty, it's pretty incredible. Like 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 you did with the, you know, with the online class. With the you know, you were one of the first who was doing this kind of. Kind of visionary, you know, try to bring the the schools online. You know. Yeah, I was the first, as far as yeah, I you were. Know. You were ten when you, to, when you told me. I was like, really? So it was really, you know, who thought about you know? And then you see now there are thousands of schools. As you were said before, there are good schools, best school, you know, stuff, you know, like we have an with the internet, we have a lot of information, and you have to pick which one are the, the are the good one, you know. There's the, a lot of good yeah. ones, though. There's a lot of good ones. Um, you know, just like how there's a lot of really good soccer games, but there's only one World Cup. <laughs> that is true, yeah. I'm just kidding. We, I'm we, just won't, kidding. we, we won't fall. We won't fall. We'll fall World Cup, so it's good. No. Yeah, congrats on that. Uh, and uh-huh. so I wanted to just finish off by saying thank yeah, yeah, you to the finish. wonderful audience that's watching. Also, Andrea's class registering for october 25th you can check that out look out for his other everything else uh follow him on instagram follow him on uh you know look him up and just start following uh to stay updated on the amazing things that that you're doing andrea i'm trying i'm trying to be up to be more updating stuff you know but obviously with the projects you know with the motivation to sometimes it's, it's kind of slow so apologize for that and uh if you ever want to do a kickstarter to do a sculpt for a fan art for akira let me know i would love to get something that would be uh, maybe 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 we do we, we have to think about it yeah, yeah. we have to, <laughs> have to think about and then we have to talk about it. yeah that, would be that, could be, that could be cool that could be cool 
Thank you, everybody. Thank you for sticking around, and uh, you know, thank you. Appreciate it. it means a lot.